Welcome back. We are now in Photoshop. Uh, I have no idea how you can do all the stuff in, in, in uh, GIMP or in uh, any other program. So I'm using Photoshop since quite a while. I'm, I'm not a totally Photoshop crack, but I think I kind of know what I'm doing here. So um, just follow my um, more or less standard procedure, which is basically um, some noise reduction, some color enhancement, some color tweaks. Um, I have usually kind of a path that I'm, I'm always going, but it's not always exactly the same stuff as I'm doing. So now and then I'm, I'm, I'm trying this and that and, and um, mostly it turns out quite quite nice. So what I have here, this is really helpful if you have that for Photoshop, is that I have some some um, um, actions that I save by myself. So oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I see that's the it's it's the German version, but I try to to um, tell it all in English. Uh, yeah, it's all the German version. But yeah, I'm 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 continuing. Uh, talking in English, and uh, I think you will find the, the dialogues and, and the settings. I mean, it, it looks everybody the same. Um, so I have some actions. So I have this this lab color boost. Uh, what I'm what I'm using uh, quite frequently. It's basically uh, convert the, the the modus to to the lab color space, um, and then uh, change the gradation. Uh, so basically, change the curves a bit. Um, and then go back to to uh, the RGB mode and and all this. I, I maybe will not use this action. I will show you how to do that step by step. Uh, but what is really really handy is that I got myself the astronomy tools, also any astro actions. I rather don't use this because many things are they are not quite working for me. But astronomy tools I'm working with quite frequently, especially. Uh, to to reduce the, the uh, star size, and now and then to to um, here this is this uh, reduce uh, blue violet halos. Uh, now and then it's it's sometimes working quite nice, and also I use it quite often for the contrast enhancement. Um, many other things I do with the Photoshop tools, uh, Photoshop's own tools. So. First thing, what we what we do is now we, we crop this image a little bit because we have here this, this black rims and uh, it's a little bit, uh, as I said, from the stacking and from from the um, from the uh, dithering. So we just I like this two to three standard normal photo stuff. So we crop just a little bit, not too much. Just just a bit. we don't need to be too careful. Yet, but um, well, let's just move it a little bit here with the arrow keys. Whoop, that was the wrong direction. Just get rid of a little bit of the rims. And I like to have keep a bit nebulosity here in the lower part. That's, that's fine for now. So we got rid of this. And uh, the next step is just to duplicate uh, the background so that we can start. Okay, so uh, what I usually do first is getting rid of a little bit noise. So you see there's a lot of noise to, uh, in the darker parts. And uh, that's working pretty well. Uh, I have I have some, some filters and I have also the Nick collection. It's an old version of the Nick collection and Define is quite nice. But it turned out that the camera raw filters from, from, um, from Photoshop are much, much better for this kind of uh, noise, so zoom in a little bit, go to the noise, and uh, we just reduce the luminance for, uh, noise and the color noise. So, um, initial value of 25 is working mostly quite quite okay. So, you see it got less noise, and then just also here, 25 is also quite nice for the color noise. So, it's much better already. Just hit OK. We don't do anything else yet here. Um, just moving in here, and you see that's the difference. It's now reduced noise with noise, reduced noise. So that's that's it's quite nice here. But uh, however, it's not 
masked yet, and you see also you lose some contrast and some details in the brighter areas. And that's what I actually don't want, because here the noise is not that bad, and I would rather reduce the noise in this area a little bit at a later stage or so. So we need to mask it, and it's very, very simple to, to make a, a mask here. Uh, I just mark uh, basically with this uh, color picker, so I just go to uh, selection and uh, select the uh, color, uh, color area, and then I just click somewhere on, I mean it's basically already where it's selected, I just click on a, on a darker background, and um, you can play a little bit with the tolerance values, so it doesn't matter too much. So that looks quite nice. So I want to uh, mask. Um, I want to see the noise reduction in the in the background, but I don't want to have so much noise reduction in the in the foreground or in the in the, in the bright areas. You can invert it a little bit and then refine it a little bit. So that looks quite okay. So I just select that. I have selected my, my active uh, layer here, and I just hit the mask uh, button here, and I directly have my uh, selection as a mask in, in there. So with uh, the Alt key and clicking on the mask, you can see that. So it's, it's a little bit it's a bit grainy, so you can you can basically go to the filter, uh, go to um, the what is it in English? It's it's the um, softeners basically, and then I go to the Gauss uh, softening filter and choose a small radius, so one or two is fine. So it's just basically softening the edges a bit. Uh, it's fine. So I have a filter, or I have a mask for, for this noise filter. So you see there's no noise correction in this area when I click it on and off so that you don't see any change in the brighter areas and you see a clear change in the darker areas so that we got rid of a lot of noise already in here. So that looks quite nice. So good. What next? So we can now um, play a bit with our uh, color. So it's it's not quite as I want it yet. So I have there are different ways to do that. I can go to the to the to the uh, picture corrections and start with this uh, colors and saturation um, uh, dialog. So I can I can go to um, the, the, the blues, for instance and uh, increase the saturation of the blues. And then you see there's a lot of change here in my core part already. Uh, what I see then here. Um, but I do it the other way around. I do it with the, uh, with the camera raw filter. So first is uh, that I combine my background and the noise reduced. Um, layer and just um, um, duplicate the layers and then I choose here um, reduce to one layer and so I can I can I can work now on this complete layer here. Uh, then I go to um, the filters and I choose the camera raw filter directly again and um, we go to the colors. So it's the HSL yeah, it's it's the um, HSL settings. Uh, it's it's the hue, uh, hue, saturation, and luminance, and there you can then also start uh, to play around. So basically, I have a relatively clear image in my head what I want to see. Uh, I want to have nice orange uh, colors from the from the uh, H alpha, and I want to have nice blue colors for the for the oxygen. So. I, I'm going to increase the, the, the saturation of the blue directly uh, a bit. Then I go to increase the saturation of the orange a bit, maybe a little bit red. We can overdo it a little bit to see what the effect is, so that it's far too much anyway. But I, I guess I will not do it too much in the red, just a little bit. 
Uh, we can see there is no blue at all in this picture. So if you, if you play with the blue colors, there's nothing happening. Uh, yellow is also not that much. So there's also nothing happening. What we can do is uh, tweak a little bit here the, the, the uh, purple and magenta. Uh, so you see what happens here. Uh, maybe not, not so much in a saturation, but we can check uh, the color hue, basically, the, the hue and also the luminance a little bit. So the blue here, it's, uh, it's a lot of, of, of um, cyan still in there. So uh, it's quite nice. It's aquamarine in German. So the cyan values, um, it's, it's that we can change a little bit to, to more blue. No, there's not that much happening at the moment. Uh, let's see what the luminance is saying. Yeah, there's actually not that much cyan in there, but what you see here is that there's a lot of cyan around the stars itself. So there you see there's something happening. We need to get rid of that a little bit later with the um, uh, CA correction. And so that's also what you see here. There's uh, quite a bit cyan still. So there's something happening there. Okay, then uh, just let's concentrate on uh, blue and orange first. So that we can we can play with the blue. Yeah, that's uh, the luminance here at the moment. Oops, yeah, there's a modification coming from my white wall uh, order. Uh, can he play with the with the color tone of the blue channel? So we can make it give it a bit more bright blue, a bit darker blue. So. So it's, so it's quite nice here. So the purple, we can also give it a little bit touch to the to the bluish side. So that's that's basically how you like it, how you want it. Um, it's all about your taste and, and um, what what you like to see in the image. We can play a bit with the luminance, so give the orange a little bit more luminance, give the red a little bit more luminance if you want. So we don't need to do too much here, not to overdo it. So but um, just leave it like this. I just wanted to show you that, that, that you can play a little bit with this. Maybe a little bit this one. Maybe a little bit more saturation for the blue. Yeah, just just not, not overdo it. And just Hit OK and you can see that's the before, that's the after. So you see there's a lot of more blue uh, in the nebula already, but there's also a lot of more blue in the um, rest of the image. And that's basically what I don't want. I don't want it to color my whole uh, background now in blue. So I'm creating myself basically a, a new mask again. Um, to do it rather simple is uh, I just grab the mask here, press Alt key, and, and click on, on the mask. Um, and I just hit uh, uh, Command A for, for mark everything, Command C uh, for copying. Then I go into the new layer here, create a new background, a uh, new uh, um, layer mask um, with Alt and click and go into the mask, Command uh, V, and it's um, directly putting this mask in. In this case, we don't want to see the, 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 um, the space background or this, this, this uh, area here. So we just invert it with uh, command I. Uh, it's, it, this is the shortcuts for a Mac, but um, I think it's rather simple to find on a PC as well. And now I want to see the changes, of course, in my nebula. And I also want to see the changes in the, in the inner part of the nebula as well. So you see now, uh, the core is rather untouched here, but uh, I want to see it in the whole area. So I just go to the to the uh, to the brush tool, uh, choose a white brush, um, and also paint into my layer mask. I need to activate my layer mask and just paint white in there so that I can see uh, what I did in this area here completely. No, I think I did something, what I did wrong now. It's always a little bit this stupid thinking. Uh, with this, 
I was thinking wrong. I'm sorry for that. Uh, yes, we want to delete an air mask here. So everything is colorful. We want to see that. We don't want to see that. Um, create a new layer, a uh, new layer mask. Go into the mask. Go into the in inverted one. So and make sure it's white. Make here this whole part, so I basically want to see all the changes in the in the nebula. Make it the brush a bit bigger, very soft rim, very soft edges, and then just basically say, okay, in this area here, I want to see everything what I, I did there. So, and now we now we have it. It's the right way. I, yeah, that was basically I choose the wrong color here, so it's uh, it's always a bit. Oop, sorry, I need to go into the layer mask and then I just can basically bring back here the, the color changes a bit of what we did. So there's a bit there, there's a bit there. So now we have it a bit more colorful here in the middle. It's sort of looks quite nice, okay. But it's it's for it's a quick and dirty thing, so um, again, here I combine um, my channels, just duplicate, reduce it on one layer, and we can go for the next step. Uh, it's basically we reduce a bit the, the, the star sizes. So um, let me check here and some of this make stars smaller. It's basically the same like um, increasing the, the dark areas. Uh, I just go here to, to make stars smaller and uh, just hit uh, and play. So I'll just do it. Um, so it's taking a moment. The image is also not that small. Even if it's only a 11 megapixel camera, but uh, the size is quite, quite a bit. So it takes a moment. Usually I do it twice. There we are. And it's putting it on the same layer. So with the uh, command Z, I always go back one and then I can see the difference. So that is. Reduce stars, and it was the inch before, so you see that stars are a little bit um, less intense. And uh, I do it directly once more. Turned out that, that, that uh, two or three times is mostly enough. We just did the star reduction or the, the, the reduce star size uh, stuff, so I did it twice, um, and this is the result here before and after reducing the star size. And what I like to do now is uh, getting a little bit more structure in this picture, a little bit more crispness and so, and also reduce uh, the cyan tint here from, from the stars in the, in the, in the background or in the foreground stars, and just um, yeah, crisp it up a little bit and, and so on. So. For this, I just grab this layer and mark it and copy it and open a new uh, file, uh, string new, and just paste it in there. <clears throat> because I want to go to um, the HDR tools for Photoshop, uh, so I could just go to picture, corrections, and then go to uh, the HDR tools. Uh, it will reduce the document, and that's the reason why I copied it into a new uh, file or a new picture. And I say, yeah, reduce it. Um, if I say no, then it would just stop it. Mm. So it takes a little moment, and we go here now. The method features uh, local enhancements, uh, local 
um, yeah, I think it's enhancements. And um, then usually we play with the with the with the um, darks, with the lights, a little bit with the hue and uh, saturation again. And we also can play a little bit with the detailed um, enhancement. So uh, just it's depending on the taste. So I would take a little bit of the saturation out, not too much. Uh, you, I can, can put it to dynamic uh, here. I can, I can just leave as it is. We don't want to tweak that. Uh, the lights I would take back a little bit. I need to wait a little moment. It's also working. So you see here, I don't want to overdo it with the lights. The darks we can get out a little bit. And the details I also want to enhance a bit more. Uh, okay, that's should, should be fine. Can tweak it in much more detail, and but it's uh, for the tutorial. It's it, it's uh, good enough to just show what I did and uh, the details you can try out a little bit as you want. So just uh, select all, copy it again, go back to our first uh, to our main image. Paste it there. I can close this layer. We don't, we don't need it. Um, we also don't need to save it. It's fine. And so this is now. You see, it's it's much, it's it's much more glowing. It's it's much nicer. I don't want to have this introduced to the uh, uh, to the areas outside of the nebula too much. So I simply create uh, a layer mask. Go to uh, selection and then. Um, Color and uh, just do it as before. So choose it like this. And it's fine. You can you can uh, get rid of this small area later. And say okay. Create a mask. And um, yep. Yeah, that's much better. It's it's uh, nicer, and uh, in the middle we can just give it a small push with the, with the brush that we. Uh, there was a smaller dark area here in the mask, and then we just get rid of this now. Uh, yep, that looks good. Mm. Next step is here uh, to reduce the uh, just this greenish uh, cyan colors uh, from from the uh, stars. And for this, I, I can I, I will here reduce everything shortly uh, to just uh, keep the working memory a little bit lower. So I mean the the file size is increasing and increasing. So just to reduce this here to one layer. Uh, so we yeah, have it a little bit cleaned up here. Um, so reducing the, the, the colors here, there are different ways. You can just desaturate a little bit uh, the cyan colors. You can also uh, go via the uh, chromatic operation correction in the um, camera raw filter settings. I think to just keep it simple, we can, we can simply uh, reduce the saturation here. Uh, go to uh, the Picture, we need to first choose the layer we want to work with. Go to Picture, Corrections, and then Hue and Saturation. We just choose the cyan tones, I and mean, it depends on your image and your camera what more tones you need to reduce. In this case, it's cyan. Uh, and I reduce a bit the saturation, and you see directly the effect, so it looks much, much better. Uh, so just reduce it to 40, 50, that, 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 that will do quite okay. Maybe, maybe we'll give it 50. And what I also do is uh, I reduce the, the brightness of this. So you can you see here, this is uh, basically all the stars have a slight uh, cyan tint. And uh, if you really overdo it, then you see the stars very, very bright. So we reduce the brightness here as well, so let's say 20. 15, 20, whatever, that, 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 that will be fine enough. Uh, it's okay. 
And of course, we also desaturated now the area here in our nebula. Actually, I, I liked uh, this. So I'm sorry, I need to go back once and need to um, duplicate a layer. Um, then I can, can do that again. And just go to, sorry, there. Corrections, few saturations. We added on minus 50, whatever. Nope, sorry, and that was the, the overall saturation. We should go to Cyan, of course. Go to the minus 50, reduce a bit the brightness. And that's okay. So that's the preview, that's before, that's after, so that's fine. So, okay. And of course, I want to bring back the saturation and the colors in the core here. Actually, here I like this, this, this blue halos around the stars because the core is anyway bluish. Um, so, I again, do the trick with the, with the uh, layer mask. So, okay. selection, color, it's basically always the same. So that's, that's good. That's, um, okay. Create a new mask. And there we go. Yep, the mask is, of course. Uh, what happened here? Oh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, I see that's a beginner's mistake. So I need, of course, to, to, to uh, change the, the mask. Inverted because uh, that's what we don't want to see, and that's what we want to see. Uh, should be fine now. And, uh, the, there's still some uh, some cyan in, so maybe we need to refine the mask a bit. A bit careful with the. I, I delete this mask once more, and we uh, need to. Get of course the halos of the stars in there, also masked. So go to selection again, color space, and we refine it here a little bit. Is the is the settings? Oh, is the tolerance settings? So we need to make the stars a bit smaller, so that the outer part of the um, uh, saturation is now gone. So we need to make the stars in the mask a bit smaller. Should be, maybe that's, that's working better now. And then we can paint in here again a little bit with the, with the a white or dark color, white or black, to mask it or to refine it in the middle a little bit. So try this. So now, um, of course, again, um, change it, invert it. Mm, that's, that's better. So you see that it's, it's a bit better. There, of course, there is a bit, the, the bigger stars especially, they have quite a certain thing still. So here it's, of course, much, much better already. What we can do here is uh, that we just grab a brush, it's a bit big. So, and then uh, you can also go into the mask, activate the mask, and uh, then go around the, the brightest stars, and you can get rid of this uh, halos again. So, it's, it's also making it a bit milder. What you also can do is, uh, I mean, just take a coarse brush, like a very coarse brush, and with, a, with a very soft rim, so basically hard and zero. Okay, that's a bit too much. So, and then you can also just go in these areas here, just around, and uh, just mask it out. So that everything 
Let's take some back. So let me see here. Let me get rid of the Siam virus. But keep it in this area. Yeah, I like it actually. So that's, that's, that's quite okay. So well, that's the that's the before, that's the after. So it's also reducing the star size a little bit. And, uh, so that's, that's quite, quite nice. I like it. So uh, again, uh, duplicate the layers, reduce it to one layer to just uh, uh, have it a bit separated here. So, and next step here is uh, what we can do now is to um, increase a little bit the details and also the next step afterwards is then increasing a little bit the colors. So for the details I have here uh, the Nick collection filters. It's an older version. Uh, I think it's uh, version 1 something from DXO already. Um, but what we have here is the um, no, sorry, I, I started defined that we don't want to use filters, make collections, uh, we want to have the color effects. And there's uh, one detail enhancer. Uh, and that's something what I quite like. It's of course overdoing it a lot, but uh, I mean, look at this, it's, it's really pulling out some of the faint stuff. And uh, here's a lot of, of, of detail, it's looking very crisp and, and um, shiny. I just leave it here on on this uh, on this standard settings. We can we can tweak a little bit with the with the layer opacity. So takes a little moment. Yep, there it comes, and it creates directly a new layer. And look at this! It's before and after, before and after, and it's that's really a huge jump. It's of course too much, so we again make a, make a layer a mask, um, just just the color. So just go here. Uh, I would like to have the tolerance not too high, so I would like to keep a little bit of this fan stuff here. So, okay, and. Creating a layer, mask. I'd like to go in there and uh, make it a bit softer. So we go to the blur, Gaussian blur. That's fine. And I also want to get rid of this uh, masked areas inside here. I, I would like to have the nebula itself uh, enhanced uh, and. So yeah, we have white color and just paint over that. It's, it's, it's fine. So that's how it looks. So we have it much, much more crisp. And we also see some, some more of the other parts here. It's a little bit too much. So I give it 80%, maybe. So that, that looks quite OK for me. After the detail extractor. Um, yeah, again here, um, before, after, looks fine to me. I like it that way. So again, reduce it to one layer. Mm. So that's, that's fine, we can work with this. I would like to do maybe one, two, three, three further steps, let's say. Uh, we want to increase the, the, the colors a little bit. We want to make it a bit more vivid. Uh, and for this, I, I made uh, myself a, an action. Uh, I called it Lab Color Boost. I will show you how, how you do it step by step. So um, the first is I uh, duplicate the layer once more um, to show the before and after. And then I go to, to the picture settings and uh, or to the picture mode and, and change the picture mode to the Lab Color space. I don't combine everything, so I don't reduce the picture. Um, and in the lab color space, uh, I have some different settings now in the curves uh, dialog. I have the um, instant 
instead of RGB, uh, I have now here the luminance and channel A and channel B. Uh, there's something channel A is the reds and the greens, I think, and blue, the B is blues and uh, yellows, whatever. How, if I, I don't want to lie here. It's, I'm not so familiar with the lab color space, but um, found out that that works quite nice if you uh, just tweak a bit uh, the channels A and B uh, and, and give it a bit more contrast. And the easiest way to do it is uh, Go to channel A, uh, fix the middle. Uh, doesn't matter too much if it's here minus one minus one. Uh, and then move this lower part here, uh, make a small S curve. Yeah? So go here to, I usually do it to 80, uh, minus 80 here and plus 80 on this side. So you see this, it's, it's, it's very, very bright, very vivid now. Um, so just as very, very gentle S curve, then go to, to uh, channel B, fix the middle again, the same here, go to minus 80 here, plus 80 there, uh, and you see it's really, it's really glowing, it's, it's really nice, it's too much again, but, but um, maybe tweak it a bit with the layer opacity. Mm. So you say here, okay, Simply switch back to okay, this is normal. Switch back to the RGB mode. Still, we don't want to reuse it. And here, then we we, we tell the, the opacity to give it a bit less. So I think sixty four percent is is fine. So you see, it's 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 much much nicer. It's it's really it's it's, it's glowing and it's very vivid. I actually like it. Maybe give it a little bit less. It's a 50. 50 is fine too. Yeah, that, that's that's nice. Um, and since we have it uh, a little bit, we have an only a opacity of 50. I again combine it here to reduce it to one layer. So we have it now. Oops. Um, just move the background so that's. That's the image we started with. That's, that's what we have now. Mm. We give it a last tweak uh, in the uh, camera raw filter. Just go to camera raw filter again. So you see, I don't do everything at once in camera raw. I just do it now and then a few uh, tweaks in this filter. So uh, here we can just check a little bit once more with, with the lightness and with the exposure values and just give it a little bit more exposure to make it a little bit brighter take reduce a little bit the lights uh, maybe give it a tiny bit more of contrast just a tiny bit not too much uh, we can play a little bit with the with the darks so let's to get a little bit more of this faint stuff out here Actually, my first result, I, I, I was a bit more careful with masking and played a little bit more around with the mask. So it is possible to pull out much more details here of this, this, this fainter areas as well. But for this, it should be fine. I mean, many people just ask, how, how can you do that with these colors? And that was the main purpose of this um, thing here. So we can play a little bit with the whites, uh, but uh, I just see need to be careful, we maybe clip the whites here a little bit in the, in the blue color, in the, in the blue channel a little bit. So I actually don't want that, so I just leave it as it is then here. We can still play with the blacks, or with the darks, but I mean, we don't want this result. It's, I think it's, it's, it's nice as we have it. We can give it a bit more structure maybe. Just a tiny bit. Uh, we don't need to have clearance. Maybe we can reduce a little bit of the this haze, the haze a little bit. Let's, let's see. So that we don't want just a little bit the haze because we introduced with this last color boost uh, step. We introduced a little bit bluish tint in the dark areas as well. So I give it a little bit the haze. Uh, and then here, this, this, this saturation settings we don't need to touch. We, we did it quite a lot already. Mm, what I would do once more, very careful, is 
do a little bit more noise reduction. It's, it's, it's for this image and only having three hours of, uh, of data, it, it is not too bad uh, already, but I can give it a little bit more luminance uh, noise reduction, just a bit, let's say maybe 10 or so. I think there's not that much uh, color noise in there anymore, but just to be sure, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I say OK. There we go. That's, that's much better. Can, can uh, go back one step once more and just do it. Do it once more. So I just forgot to, to duplicate the layer before, so yeah, yeah that's, that's much better. You see that this bluish tint is gone. Here now, so that that's something else. That's actually what, what I'm happy for now with. Um, I would give it a little bit of crop still. Yeah, just, just a bit more in here. It's, it's just how I like it. I, I would like to have the nebula a little bit more in the middle. So that is, uh, that's fine. <coughs> And uh, yeah, so the computer is quite busy in the meantime, uh, recording all these files. Um, I guess I would leave it like this now. So there's still, you can go into the details and work out here a bit more and uh, try to get rid of some noise here and, and also here in, in this in the spider core, you can still work a little bit on. Yeah, also in the astronomy tools, there are some, some things you can still work with. I think the last time I also tried to uh, use this uh, Clary Sky actions. It's also another um, um, action set. Um, I think it's from Lonely Spec or so. You see that's, that's Clary Sky 3. So there's also, it's, it's a little tiny bit more structure here in the in this area here, I just took it off now, I took it on, so you see there's a little bit more close, so maybe I maybe actually I'll leave it in here. Mm. Yeah, we can just leave it. And yeah, that would be a quick and dirty, well it was not that quick now in the end, but uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a quick and dirty uh, tutorial how to, how to process this, this image from uh, just a pale uh, raw picture via the general combination um, from our export from APP, which looked like this, to the result that we have here now. Uh, yep, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can take something from this for your own pictures. Um, there's always room for improvement. Uh, maybe let me know what, what you think of that. Uh, maybe you have some ideas how to do it better. Uh, I still look for some nicer solution to get rid of this halos here, so there must be a nicer way to, to, to have this uh, um, desaturated halos around the stars. So I, I, I know it from many, 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 many pictures uh, that have this um, composites. But yeah, for now, uh, it will do. And uh, yeah, try with your own stuff. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.